this is lecture 21 so in the previous lecture we were doing we were looking into uh, when we ended the previous lecture we were looking into a topology of common gate amplifier or in other words we are looking into a topology where we could get a current input and we were able to get a current output by that what we essentially meant was that we wanted a current controlled current source right so what was the topology that we ended up with so the uh, transistor is biased with a constant current source the gate is biased with some R1, R2 where the input DC voltage at the gate, the DC voltage at the gate is VGQ. We have a, we have a sinusoidal voltage so current source with some source resistance RS and I would like to, we would like to ensure that what would you like to ensure? We like to ensure that all of these are in I in flows, flows out of the transistor and flows into flows into the load, right? So, what was the load? The load is as usual connected with a capacitor, which is C2. Let's say this is R D, this is R L, and the input was as usual connected through a capacitor C1 right and what did we uh, these are connected obviously and what did we uh, conclude we concluded that in order to ensure that all of I in uh, we can as well reverse the polarity of I in because this is incremental uh, reversing the polarity will help in the analysis to some extent. Uh, uh, what we need to ensure we were trying to ensure that all of this i in flows into m1 right so it flows into the source of m1 because i in has two places to go i in can go here or i in can go into m1 right mind you when i am when i am saying that i in can go to the right or the left i am i am citing the incremental picture of the of the topology so incrementally what what do we have we have We have the MOSFET whose gate is connected to ground right through, through a resistance of R1 parallel R2. This is VG. Uh, this current source I0 is open circuited in the in the incremental sense. Assuming C1 has been sized to be short circuited at the signal frequencies, so we essentially have this. And this is Gm times Vgs, where Vs is the source voltage, and on top we have a combination of rd parallel rl and this obviously is grounded so we wanted all of i in to flow into flow into the gm for that we saw that we needed to ensure that 1 over gm has to be much lesser than rs because the resistance looking up the resistance looking up into the source is 1 over gm so as long as we ensure that 1 over gm is much lesser than rs all of i in would like to flow into the flow impedance path that is into the 1 over gm now if i in flows into the low impedance path then obviously the only way it can come out is through through the top of the transistor and it will flow into rd parallel rd right so uh, so if 1 over if, if this condition is satisfied then the current that will go in will be I in and the current that will come out from the other side will also be I in. So hence we were able to isolate 
the load resistance RL from from RS, and we are able to buffer. We were able to buffer the uh, current between the load uh, and the and the source, right? So in in a, in a mm, in the classic topology, so let me write this condition here, right? So so a ideal current control current a current buffer has a has this as its input uh, has this as its incremental uh, incremental model that is if the input if this current is i1 the current at the at the other port will be some alpha times i1 right uh, but in our so that so that even if you have a even if you have a non ideal current source of i in and rs all the current will flow into i in right this is ideally however in our case in our case what we have in our case obviously here we also have rd parallel rl uh, in our case what we have in our case we don't have the input to be short circuited in our case input is input impedance is 1 over gm now in the presence of i in and rs what amount of current will flow into 1 over gm the amount of current that will flow in will be will be gm by gm plus gs times i in where gs is 1 over rs and this current is getting buffered and this buffering factor is 1 so if this is i1 this is i1 and the output is flowing into rd parallel rl right so this essentially is the, is what is happening in the incremental picture in the circuit on the top so now we uh, while we ended the previous lecture uh, i had requested you to uh, to find out if i in is a sinusoidal waveform right if i in is equal to i p sin omega naught t so let us see let us say if i in is equal to i p sin omega naught t what will be the uh, what will be the constraint on i p correct so what i am essentially saying is uh, this i in is a sinusoid so let me draw it somewhere else so you say this i in is a sinusoid while going while going up it goes up to ip while going down it goes down to minus ip okay so let us do the uh, uh, going up first so what is happening when the current through i in is increasing so, so what should we do? We should we should first try to try to intuitively see what is happening if I in is increasing because the transistor M1 we have to ensure that the transistor M1 stays in saturation and away from cutoff. So now, what do you think if I in is increasing in the direction shown? What is going to happen if I in is increasing? You are pushing in you are pushing in current into the node into into the source so what happens if you push in current into the source the source voltage is bound to rise right if the source voltage rises what is going to happen uh, what do you think is the transistor going into uh, 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 going into saturation going out of saturation or into cutoff Clearly, if the source voltage is increasing, then the gate to source voltage is decreasing. If the gate to source voltage is decreasing, which means the transistor is going towards cutoff. Now, you might also want to check what is happening at the drain. So, the so if I in is increasing, the increased current, the increased current, where, where is it flowing? That increased current is flowing into the drain, right? The increased current is flowing into the drain and it is also increasing the voltage at the drain. So, the, the voltage at the drain increases, then clearly the transistor is going 
is 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 uh, is comfortably in saturation so we don't have to worry about the saturation condition but we have to worry about the cut off condition so what is what, what is the uh, what is the criteria for cut off condition we need to satisfy we need to ensure that the total ids is always greater than 0 so what is total ids for cut off so let me see when I increases a one tends to go towards cut off. Okay, fine. So, so in this case, what do we need to see? We need to see what is IDS. What is IDS? IDS is the quiescent current plus the incremental current. What is quiescent current? Quiescent current is I naught. Correct. Right. And what is the incremental current? The incremental current from where am I getting? The incremental current I am getting from this picture, right? On the picture on the right. So incremental current is clearly I in under the assumption that 1 over GM is much less, less than RS, right? So, but incremental current is I in in which direction? Is it positive or negative? It's obviously going in, right? So with respect to the direction of I naught, it will be negative so which means uh, ids will be i naught minus i in correct so this has to be greater than equal to zero which means that the uh, worst case condition is ip has to be less than equal to i naught right so this is the cutoff condition for ip right so if you want if you are trying to design a circuit for which uh, you would want to ensure that a lot of, uh, if I, I in has a, a very high large amplitude without uh, pushing the transistor into saturation, then what do you need to do? You need to ensure that the transistor is biased with a larger current, right? Okay. So if, if, if now let's say the other way, uh, other condition when I in is decreasing, what is happening? So let's look at the transistor once again. Hmm. If I in is decreasing, that is I in is going negative. If I in is going negative, what is happening? So let's see. If I in is going negative, which means I am drawing current out, right? So I am drawing current out of uh, of the source. If I am drawing current out of the source, what is happening to the source voltage? Source voltage is decreasing. This current is also being drawn out from the drain. Since the current I am drawing out from, uh, I am drawing the current out from drain, what is going to happen to the drain voltage? Clearly, the drain voltage is dropping, which means the transistor is going towards linear region, right? So, 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 so we see this, we, we find out the same, cons we find out the constraint for the linear region case. So, when I, when I in is dropping, M1 tends towards linear region okay so what is the condition then the condition is total vds has to be greater than equal to total i don't have to bother about source the total vd should be greater than total gate minus one threshold voltage total voltage at the gate minus a threshold voltage so what is the total voltage at the drain Total voltage at the drain was the quiescent voltage plus incremental. What was quiescent? Quiescent was VDD minus I naught times RD, right? So let's check whether that is indeed correct, right? Yeah, so the, the voltage here was VDD minus I naught times RD because the I naught was flowing uh, through, through RD, okay? Uh, what about the incremental? What is the incremental part? For, uh, uh, for the drain voltage. So clearly, if I in is, uh, if 1 over GM is much lesser than RS, again, all, all of I in is flowing out of that node, right? Since all of I in is flowing out of that node, what is the incremental voltage at this node? The incremental voltage at this node will be minus I in times RD parallel RL right when i in is flowing out so i should also make a note here 
assuming 1 over gm is much much lesser than rs similarly if we make the same assumption then the voltage at the drain will be uh, vd quiescent voltage minus i in or let me simply write ip because this will be worst case in case of when ip uh, when the i in is at it neg is, is, is at its uh, negative half cycle peak of the negative half cycle so vdd minus id i not rd minus ip times rd parallel rl should be greater than equal to total vg what is total vg total vg is the quiescent vg quiescent vg is vgq right so this is vgq what is the incremental vg clearly incremental vg is zero because no excitation has been applied at the gate right minus one threshold voltage which means what which means ip has to be less than equal to vdd minus i naught rd right minus v overdrive quiescent right because this stuff was v overdrive quiescent divided by divided by rd parallel right so uh, so which essentially means that you have two constraints you have i mean like before you have one constraint here and you have one constraint here if ip is supposed to be a uh, if if, if ip is supposed to be a sinusoidal Volt, uh, current source then the worst of these two constraints right will determine the amplitude because you would neither want the transistor to go uh, out of linear region or into cutoff right whichever is minimum of these two will uh, will determine whether the transistor actually is in proper operating condition or not right okay